Okay, so now that we have this piece blocked in, we can move to <clears throat> the layering process. So the layering is before you get in those finite details, but it can also be um, while you're putting the more details in. Um, I would say with layering on the board, you'll probably end up doing many layers, but you wanna make sure that first layer is is solid enough to get down uh, to get down a base. So then you can start layering on uh, more, <clears throat> layering on more detailed parts. So now you're honing in on that, on where those details are. I'm just going to remix. I'm going to get back in on the mountains a little bit. I'm going to mix a good amount here. To remix some details. Now I'm mixing pretty much the same main color. But I'm mixing it again so that I can add some more details. Maybe some snow on the mountains, a little bit of haze. I'm not gonna do pure white for haze on the mountains. Just mixing a few colors to make it easy for myself to pull up some of that. Acrylic tends to dry a little bit darker, so I'm hoping this works well enough to just lay this down. I don't want to redo my um, I don't want to redo my sky here. I'm even going to lay down some blue so that I can do that blending. Blue, more blue, and red. So I can do some blending while I'm in here. Keeping some of this area in here. And I want to make sure it's nicely blended. So I'm going to get some areas to do a little bit of blending here. Just trying to get some texture in that back area there, the mountains. 
but I don't want to get too detailed or too saturated. Remember, you want to switch up your brushes. You don't want to get too caught up in that using the same brush. So I'm going to get a little bit darker. I'm going to add a little bit of white. Remember, you don't want straight white for the snow. I'm going to keep it pretty simple here. Maybe get my liner. I'm not going to get too caught up on details though. So one of the main, one of the big things is trying to simplify your shapes. I'm getting more saturated as I move forward with the mountains as they get closer. Now I'm using my liner, which is this thin brush, just to get in those little details there. Notice I am doing a bit of a sharp edge. When I go back forward with these rocks, I wanna make sure I do what's called a lost and found edge, which is softening the edges so that they aren't too prominent because that can flatten the piece if the edges are too, um, if the edges are too sharp then it becomes, it becomes flat, it might even become maybe what one would call stylized or cartoony. So I'll show you in a second here. I'm just going to try to soften this edge a little bit. See if we can get something a little bit darker here. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that mountain. I'm okay with a little bit of orange peeking through. It's actually kind of nice. Sharpen this a little bit. Okay. All right, so let's move forward with the rock edge. So actually, I'd like to mix this up wipe this off, wipe my palette knife off, and mix a little bit of gray. So I can actually do that pretty easily with 
the ultramarine blue that already had a little white in it and a little bit of red. I may need some yellow in there just to kind of, um, just to balance that white out. So I'm still keeping my shapes pretty simple. And you'll notice I did mix white before I added the yellow. Um, that is okay to do sometimes if you're really, really kind of getting your color, you're pretty confident in the color you're mixing. Uh, but it is best to mix those colors first and then add the white. All right, so I'm actually getting a really nice brown here that I like. Uh, I am going to mix more just to have some white, a tint of this gray in here. Or this grayish brown. So I'm going to first mix this, get a nice amount. I'm going to mix a little bit of white. So I have a tint of it so I can easily readily grab it and I think I actually want to have a shade of it as well. So I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine and burnt umber to it. So I'm going to mix my ultramarine and remember that that can make a nice black pretty quickly. Got a little bit of this, this dirt in here so you want to avoid that as much as possible. This dried paint, really. It's not dirt. Okay, so I wipe my palette knife off. I'm going to mix a black real quick. Kind of a cool black, but it still has burnt umber in it, so it warms it up just enough. I'm going to make a shade of that color. So now I have my shade. It's a little bit blue, so I'm going to mix bit of burnt umber in there just to warm it up a little. Okay, so I have a nice shade of that, a tint and a mid-tone. I can just grab from it Wash my brushes. <clears throat> Remember when you're putting up your brushes, you want to use some soap if you put them up for the night. It's good to use a little bit of soap. Um, not quite as necessary as if you're working with oil paints, but it's never a bad idea. Okay, so you want to grab the appropriate brush size for what you're working with. I'm starting to work with some more details. So, this is where it's not exact. Um, I'm okay with that, but I'm gonna kind of find where I'm at here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my rock just up a little bit. my mid-tone. Pick up some of this color, the darker shadow. And now I'm doing the um, simplifying of shapes still. You can do the lost and found edge here if you want. It just means blending the edges a little bit more so you don't have as much detail. You can sharpen certain edges if you want, but sometimes keeping them too sharp, like I said, can really flatten them. You don't want to get your brush too watered down like what I just did. Uh, that can ruin your texture so you can actually use your rag to erase if you want I'm 
Okay, I'm gonna find where I am again. So this got a little bit lost. You want to keep right around the general area. Got a little lost with it, but that's okay. I like to look at the artist Fairfield Porter. Um, he does a lot of simplifying in his pieces, but they're really beautiful the way he works with color. So I'll share that artist with you guys. Just getting the basic shapes here, getting some tints and shades. A little bit too light of a tint for me. I'm gonna lighten, I'm gonna darken that up just a little bit. Just making, again, just making shapes really, just seeing where my main shapes are. Lost and found edge where it's kind of blurred there. That's Gonna help make it feel a little more real, realistic. starting to shape different rocks. Don't get too overwhelmed if you get a little lost in your uh, in your landscape. That happens sometimes, especially with rocks. So I try to just do, again, just general shapes. first and then go in with details. Yeah, so you'll see I stuck with some general shapes there. I know I keep repeating that, but it's important to remember. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in. I want to get that forest back in, so I'm going to get a darker shape, darker color, and I just got this green by mixing blue and burnt umber and, uh, and then mixing it with a little bit of yellow.
Simplify, simplify, simplify. It's very important. You don't want to go too detailed too quickly or else you'll get kind of frustrated possibly. And if you get frustrated, just try and regroup and just remember, okay, I can get back to this. It's okay. Might even add a little bit of a shadow underneath to ground these trees. So I'm using the side of my brush, get some of that tree detail in there. Cast shadow. I don't want to get too detailed with this painting, so I'm going to stay right there. Getting saturated as we move forward. Looks like this got a little bit too watery, that's okay. Kind of going in, getting some of that area more defined here. And I'm working my way forward with that second layer. Don't want to get too muddy here. Blur this, this lost and found edge again. It's good to have those layers so you simplify those areas of wood <clears throat> so that they come forward. I'm going to do a little bit of blending so I bring the paint, bring it into itself or bring the colors into each other. So I mix some colors here. Remix some of that similar color that was already there. And I'm just going in and laying that foundation again. And I'm actually gonna put highlight. So I'm gonna lay, that, lay this bottom part in, but then I'm gonna go in and put a highlight. Sorry, my dog is running around. I'm going to do it before it dries. Remember, acrylic dries really quickly, so if you want to use uh, acrylic retarder or what's called slow dry, um, you can to slow the drying process. You just mix about 15%, which is a couple drops for each mixture of paint. So I'm using the side of my brush again. just to get this highlight on here. Get some of this mixture that I already made. Put a little yellow back in. You notice I'm doing a lot of mixing on the palette that's okay to do when you're mixing small amounts. In fact, it might even be necessary. I'm blending, I'm gonna get a little bit of water.
Okay, well, let's get some rocks in here. Some more rocks. Might even get a few highlights on um, our shadows. Highlights and shadows as details on those rocks there. Just get a few details for contrast. We don't need much though. That shadow. I want to keep my brush kind of wet, um, but not too wet and not too dry. Sometimes having too much dry brush can lead to this sort of look that you don't necessarily want. Um, it gets too dry, you can't drag paint across, and it becomes an issue. I just want to see, okay, where, where my green is here. I don't want to keep it too bisected. And too directly in the center. Here. So I want a focal point over here. I want to keep the viewer interested. But I also don't want it to be too terribly stark in that area. So I'm going to try and blend it a little bit. I want to dull this down. Noticing too that this area needs just a little bit more dark. want to work it too much though. All right, it's about as worked as I want that to be. I'll go back to here. I 
I want to do specific parts of this water. So we can get some highlights in here and some lowlights too. We'll get hazier, lighter blue as it goes back into space. And we'll get some more contrast as it comes forward. Whether you want to wet it and get more paint, best to not let it dry too much. Just get in some white now so we can kind of blend it a little bit more. Keeping, still keeping it fairly simple and not getting too terribly detailed with everything. Just kind of keeping it as shapes, remixing some of the areas. And I'm just sort of doing this very squiggly loose lines. But I don't want it to get too muddy. Still don't want it to get too muddy, so I'm going to come in correct some, clean my brush, keep some of the simplified areas here. Bring back some of that haziness here. I want it to get a little more detailed as it comes forward. Because remember that detail and saturation happens toward the front. I even put a bit of a rock here. Mix a little bit of that black again. So I put the base of the rock, which is that dark color, put a mid-tone of the rock, so um, kind of blend that with the, with the black. I'll put a little bit of a highlight on the rock that's coming out. I want to do it all at once because I want to be able to blend. And put some of those highlights here. And I might just put a low light there as well. A little bit more brown. And 